Raiders, I'm Riley Weibel. And I'm Hudson Ridley. On this week's episode, we have an inside look into an on-campus vaccine clinic and an announcement about homecoming. All that and more on this week's episode of RJTV. In partnership with Tri-County Health Department, Regis Jesuit will offer an on-site mobile vaccine clinic run by Stride Community Health Center. It will take place Friday, September 24th from 1230 to 630. The clinic will offer both drive through and walk-up options and is open to all in our RJ community, including our students, parents, and alumni for their first dose. Or for those who are now eligible for a booster, only Pfizer is available as of now. All members of the Cherry Creek High School community are also invited to the clinic, as it will take place prior to the football game against the Bruins. A follow-up clinic will be hosted from 1230 to 630 on October 22nd for those who need the second dose or boosters. We talked to Dr. Bob Belknap, an infectious disease doctor in Denver, about the vaccine. Well, hi, my name is Bob Belknap, and I'm an infectious disease doctor here in Denver. Uh, and I'm here today to talk to you about the COVID vaccination. Uh, and first, I, I want to say thank you to uh, those of the students who have already gotten vaccinated. Uh, and really, I'm, I want to talk to the students who are still feeling unsure, uh, have questions, uh, and, and just aren't, don't know if it's right for them or not. Um, there's a lot of information out there um, and a lot of conflicting information. Uh, and it can, it can really feel confusing and quite frustrating. Recommendations have changed over time, and, and that's difficult. And what we are experiencing and witnessing is the progress of science and medicine. And that progress is learning, and learning is messy, and learning, as you all know, is hard. Uh, and so I'm here to tell you what we do know. So what do we know about vaccines? Well, vaccines are, in fact, truly wondrous. We've had them for about 100 years. They've saved millions of people. Vaccines are the reasons that you all have not seen or know anyone who has smallpox or had measles or polio. And you might say, but Dr. Bob, these, these COVID vaccines were really came about quickly and, and that makes me nervous. Um, and to that I'd say, you know, the science behind these vaccines has been developed over more than 15 years. And it's built on the years of experience and benefited from all of the vaccines that came before. Uh, and it really, they, they did develop quickly, but they developed quickly because it's an example of what we can achieve when faced with really an overwhelming and unprecedented problem. So then you might say, well, Dr. Bob, what about the long-term effects? I'm worried, and it's true. The longest someone's been who's had this vaccine is a little bit over a year. But that doesn't mean we don't know anything. We, in fact, know a lot about these vaccines. We know exactly what's in them. And what's in the vaccines is a combination of fats, sugars, and salts, things that our body sees every day, things that our body knows how to break down. And very quickly, in fact, after you receive the vaccine, the components of the vaccine are no longer in your body. The only thing that you're left with uh, is your immunity. You're less likely after getting a vaccine to get COVID. If you do get COVID, you're less likely to get sick from it. We've not seen any late effects in the people who got the vaccine early on, and we have no reason to expect that there will be long-term effects from the vaccine. Unfortunately, what we have seen, though, are long-term effects from getting COVID. So even people who haven't gotten very sick from it, haven't ended up in the hospital, haven't ended up needing a ventilator, uh, many of those people are left with long-term symptoms or what's been termed long COVID. And that can be prolonged fatigue, muscle aches, joint aches, difficulty in concentrating. So we know the long-term effects that can happen from COVID. Um, and we don't have any reason to, to suspect that there will be long-term effects from the vaccine. That said, it really is overwhelming. And I, I've talked to people and I know people who have, have said it's, this is really difficult and I'm, I'm just more comfortable putting this in God's hands. You know, whatever happens, happens. And to that I say, I, I completely understand why that would feel comforting and why that would feel like the safest choice. I would also say God has given us the choice and we are fortunate to have access to a vaccine that can prevent us from getting sick and from getting infected. And we're fortunate because we live in a place and a time where we have access to this and many people in the world don't and they don't have the opportunity to make that choice. And truly most people who get COVID won't get that sick or may get a mild illness, but some won't. Some will get very sick 
and some will in fact pay the ultimate price and die from COVID, something that is completely preventable. So my request to all of you is to ask your questions. Talk to your friends who have gotten vaccinated, to, you know, hear about their experience. Some of them will tell you that they got sick. The symptoms they experienced, that was their body generating an immune response, getting protection for them. And so I hope after you do that, you talk to people and you answer your questions that you choose to get the vaccine. It truly is the safest, fastest, surest way for us to move beyond this pandemic, to get back to the things that we, we enjoy doing, gathering with friends and family, watching and attending sports, concerts. It's the way we're gonna get rid of these masks once and for all. And I would, I would also say it's a way to serve the community. By getting vaccinated, you're helping to protect the people who can't, like younger children. You're helping to protect older people, people whose immune systems just aren't able to mount their, their own response. Um, and so they're at risk. And by you getting vaccinated, you're protecting them. So I hope that you'll choose to, to make that choice and get yourself vaccinated. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Bob. Now that we've heard from Dr. Bob, although he wasn't able to visit campus, here's an important message from Pope Francis. Gracias a Dios y al trabajo de muchos, hoy tenemos vacunas para protegernos del COVID-19. Ellas traen esperanza para acabar la pandemia, pero solo si están disponibles para todos y si colaboramos unos con otros. Vacunarse con vacunas autorizadas por las autoridades competentes es un acto de amor y ayudar a que la mayoría de la gente lo haga es un acto de amor. Amor a uno mismo, amor a los familiares y amigos, amor a todos los pueblos. El amor es también social y político. Hay amor social y amor político. Es universal, siempre desbordante de pequeños gestos de caridad personal capaces de transformar y mejorar las sociedades. Vacunarse es un modo sencillo pero profundo de promover el bien común y de cuidarnos unos a otros especialmente los más vulnerables. Le pido a Dios para que cada uno pueda aportar su pequeño grano de arena, su pequeño gesto de amor. Por más pequeño que sea, el amor siempre es grande. Aportar esos pequeños gestos para un futuro mejor. Que Dios lo bendiga y muchas gracias. Thanks, Pope Francis. In preparation for the mobile vaccine clinic visiting campus on the 24th, Here's some more details to keep in mind. Anyone 12 and older can get vaccinated. All COVID-19 vaccines are free. No insurance or identification is needed. And remember, the clinic will be here 1230 to 630, September 24th, and again on October 22nd for second doses or boosters. If you have any questions about the clinic, please contact communications at RegisJesuit.com. Hey Riley, do you want to win a $20 Chick-fil-A gift card? Uh, yeah. How do I do that? Find Miss Frederick in BD-172A if you're an underclassman, or Miss Ortiz in BD-169D if you're an upperclassman. Tell them what today's Ignatian, Emergent, and Solidarity word means to you, and give your own definition and example. That sounds easy enough. And you can get 10 bonus entries if you check the posters around the school for more details. Speaking of winning, we have a few sports highlights from this past week. Your varsity football team beat Mullen High School 35-21 to last Friday, improving their record to 2-1. to Good work, boys. They play again today at Smoky Hill at the Stutler Bowl at 6. The Powder Puff game is on September 30th at 6 p.m. Number one RJ Field Hockey played their sixth game of the season against number two Colorado Academy and won one to nothing. They remain undefeated. Nice job, ladies. Check back next episode for a full Raider Sports update. Next week, we'll also have themes for Homecoming Week. That's right. Homecoming is right around the corner. Tickets go on sale today. Check your email for the link. They're each $25. Also, remember to bring in school supplies for the school supply drive for students and teachers in under-resourced communities. The drive begins on Monday the 20th. That's all we have for this week. Catch you next week. And thanks for watching.